preparing, so y'all can come in here with your wagons loaded, and uh, let's uh, let's get ready for it. Now today, uh, hey, today I want to just share with you out of the Gospel of John. So if you take your Bibles to the Book of John, please. You got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I want to talk to you about um, something that. Um, I shared with Brother Brian Steps, actually. He, he texted me and wanted to know um, a little bit about, he said he was talking to somebody about salvation and wanted to know um, more verses about eternal security. And, um, and so I, I, I felt like the Lord gave me a lot of verses to share back with him, and I want to share it with you here tonight. Um, what does it mean um, to have eternal security or to have... Um, uh, to not lose your salvation. It's popular for us to say phrases like once saved, what? Always saved. Always saved. But then if you somebody challenges you with that and you say, where, where is that found in the Bible? You may have a hard time finding that exact phrase, yeah. once saved, always, always saved. saved. Yeah. But I will say that there's plenty of scriptural evidence and uh, scriptural truth to teach us that uh, once you get salvation, you don't have to worry about losing it um, just down the road um, when you've done something wrong because that's not how you got it. And really, um, our, our topic on soul winning was really important. Um, I hope most of us got that in here. Uh, but just um, of understanding how you get salvation because if you think you earned salvation, then you, you're probably more prone to think you can lose salvation. Because when you think you can earn salvation, that means you think you did something um, to merit or deserve to get salvation. So if you think you did something to merit or earn salvation, then when you do something bad or you make a mistake, what, what's the natural uh, result then? You You're going to think you lose it. So if you think you can do something to get salvation and then you do something bad, then you're going to think you Losing salvation. So it's real important to go back to the foundation and realize, you know, what? grace is unmerited favor. I got salvation, his supernatural ability to help me get what I could not get on my own. So when I got salvation freely and it was a gift to me and I received Jesus as my personal savior, then I realized on a bad day when I slip up, maybe I say something I shouldn't have said, maybe I saw something I shouldn't have saw, maybe I heard something I shouldn't have heard, but in that time, I realized, okay, uh, really never was about me uh, when it comes to getting salvation. So it's not going to be about me uh, um, realizing losing salvation. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. At that time when that happens, you've seen something, heard something, whatever. Yes. Do you pray to God to forgive you for seeing it? Or do you just leave it in your mind and never repeat looking at whatever or Excellent thinking question. about it? Excellent question. You know what? I'll take the time to show you real quick. Go to 1 John real quick. Towards Which the one? 1 John, John, right before Revelation. Yes. The book of John, um, and then you have 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and then you have the book of Revelation. But uh, let's go to 1st John. And I want you to look down in verse number nine. If you, we don't have time to study the whole context. This is, this is chapter but, one. Uh, chapter one. But if you if you looked at the whole context of chapter one, you'll realize that um, John, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, is is speaking to the believer. If you want to just circle words like we, if you looked at verse six, if we say that we have fellowship with Him. Um, and verse 7, but if we walk in the light, um, at verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, verse 9, if we confess our sins, okay, verse 10, if we, so again, he's talking to the believer. I don't think this is a verse I would use to go to a lost person and tell him to confess all of his sins. You know, some people have done used that, and I think it's an a, a excellent verse, but probably not the best verse to share with an unbeliever mm -hmm. uh, because I believe this is talking to the believers mm -hmm. that are in Jesus Christ. But verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, when you get saved, what's another term that Jesus said? You must be what? Born again. Born again. Looking at it as a birth is a wonderful understanding to have in your mind. My salvation was a birthing of the Holy Spirit where God birthed salvation. I was born again. Um, I was born of the Spirit. And so when you get born, um, uh, what is a, a young Christian? What would we call them scripturally? A what? A babe. A babe in Christ. And we learned uh, even in the sermon Sunday, a babe uh, needs what? Milk. 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 Milk of the what? Word. Word. But as that baby grows up in Christ, that babe then desires spiritual what? Meat. Wow, this church is growing in understanding. And we're building on uh, blocks here. And so if you notice that there's a relationship that has begun at salvation, starts off as a babe in Christ and grows up to spiritual maturity. When I became a man, I put away childish things. So growing up in Christ and um, to know Christ is, and to, is to love Christ. And um, as you grow up, so uh, think of it as a relationship. Now, when you do wrong as a child that's already born, growing up in your home, and you do something wrong to, to mom or dad or grandma, what's the natural thing to do if you've done something wrong? Ask for forgiveness. And apologize. Ask for forgiveness. Admit that you've done wrong. And I look at this as a child. Uh, if you're not born, though, um, a, a, a child not born doesn't need to apologize. Does that make sense? Right. It needs to live, right? Uh, Ephesians 2, to the lost, says that we're dead in trespasses and sins. Yes. So we need to be quickened. That means to be made alive yes. by the Spirit of God. And that yes. happens at salvation. Yes. Uh, but as a child of God now, you need to not look at it like you need to get born over and over and over. You don't need to get saved over and over because once you're born again, uh, that birth is alive. Yes. And mm -hmm. you did not make yourself alive, but the Holy Spirit made you alive by um, God, and he, 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 he worked that. That's his working, okay? But when we do wrong, it's in order to do what the Scripture says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I just think of this. When I do something wrong, I just simply go to God immediately and say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've just done, even for a thought. You know, the Bible teaches us to bring our thoughts um, into captivity. Uh, uh, every, every thought. Uh, it's taught, uh, I think it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It uh, talks about every thought to the obedience of Christ. And so um, not only our actions, but our thoughts. I don't know about you, but um, I, the more I live, the more I acknowledge my extreme um, nature that is, that is just as alive as that new nature. Right. Right. And you have to continue. I think it's a daily walk with God, a, a daily submission to God, yeah. crucifying the flesh and following the Spirit. Yeah. But there's that battle. And so it's a, uh, to me, it's a, a wrong thinking to think when you get saved, when you get born again, uh, uh, I'm a new creature in Christ and all things are passed away and all things have become new. That's true. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So uh, we're a new creation. We're a new creature in Christ. But yet, uh, be aware that the old man yeah, is still alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, that flesh is what I'm saying. is flesh still is there. Still yeah. right. yeah. and, and it's a battle with the flesh and the spirit. Yeah. And if you'll read Romans chapter 6, chapter 7, and chapter 8, will outline the, the walk in the spirit or the, in the battle of the flesh. Paul said, uh, he, he just, uh, he, he really got frustrated. He said, oh, uh, was it simple man Wretched, that wretched I man am? that I am. Was that? Wretched man that oh, I am. Oh, wretched man that I am. Yeah. And he got frustrated, but then he went on to realize, uh, uh, talk about the walk and the submission to the spirit of God. It's very powerful um, there. So I just look at it as a child of God is a relationship that's begun. And you're a, you're a live child, and you, there's babes in Christ. There's people at different levels in their spiritual maturity. Yes. Yet, um, it's a relationship when we do wrong, come to God. Mm -hmm. I remember driving down the road, and I thought something I shouldn't have thought. And I remember talking to the Lord about it and said, Lord, I'm sorry for that. 
and um, and and feeling a, a bit embarrassed. They said, "Why? Why was I, I? I was a little wondering why am I so embarrassed here? Nobody else is in the car. Nobody else knows it now. We're getting on the film here. Nobody else knows what I'm on. Nobody <laughs> else knows anything. Uh, so it goes on YouTube. Uh, uh, but yet, I feel ashamed. Yet at the same time, there was a wonderful peace because I know the same God that just heard me yeah. tell him I'm sorry for what I had just thought forgave me of my sin. Yeah. Yeah.